Yeah, first I'd like to acknowledge uh, Co Coach Cutcliffe's idea of honoring 150 years of college football. That happened actually um, in ACC meetings uh, this summer, and we've become friends. And, uh, and it, his idea and his prompting to celebrate how fortunate we feel to coach this game. Um, we work really hard as AFCA trustee board members to try to improve it in every way possible and to try to, yeah, um, continue to have the young people in the game be reflected at the highest manner. And uh, I, feel, I feel lucky that, um, that he and our relationship allowed uh, me to participate or be included in, in that idea. Um, as you already know, I think uh, Coach Cutcliffe is an excellent coach, but even more important, an, an amazing person. Um, having said that, uh, I didn't anticipate the game going as it did um, because their team is rarely um, do they turn the ball over. Um, rarely does pressure affect them the way that it did. Uh, and a character, uncharacteristically, the number of turnovers and the field position and just the way the game went in general wasn't how Duke had played football to this point. So I credit our defensive staff, especially for the number of turnovers. The five turnovers certainly mattered. Fourth down stops is also taking possessions. The uh, kickoff return by Joe, not only the touchdown, but the one earlier. Simply the field position and number of opportunities we had was too great for our opponent to overcome. And those were all um, executed well by us. And so I don't think it was luck and I don't think it was random. Um, but to have that many in the same game, certainly I don't think anyone expected that, just to be truthful. Really happy um, with some of the progress I saw with our offensive front and the protection of our quarterback and improvement in the run game. Uh, I, saw, I thought both of those things were improved. I thought our blue zone scoring was also improved. And so things that we had worked so hard on um, from a, a week ago, I saw um, improvement and progress, which is really fun to see players improve and progress when they've worked so hard on something. Happy for our staff. And yeah, the Coastal is, um, is an amazing and crazy division. And, um, and that was just manifest again today. So really uh, proud of my staff, our players, and the response from a week ago, and how, how much that loss hurt, knowing that that could have easily, if we executed well enough, been a win, and for Bryce, um, how we responded and recovered without one of our very best players and people, I think is also um, something that was exemplary and, and I was really proud of. So just a really good night for, for college football in Charlottesville, and I thought the crowd was powerful. I don't know what the attendance was, but it looked, felt, and acted more like um, a college environment that is becoming hungry for really good football and, and appreciating good football. And that is so fulfilling as a head coach to just see not only the progress on the field, but to see the seats becoming more full and the support becoming more vibrant. And uh, I feel lucky to be here at this time while that's happening. And I know that's a snapshot for today. Uh, my job is to help influence and keep that going. And I feel lucky to be able to do that. It's uh, it's hard to know where to start after this one, but I'll I'll ask you about the defense. Coach Hal broke the rock. Uh, was there anything radically different about your game plan for this? Did you come in to do something schematically no. you hadn't been doing? No, there there wasn't. It actually it was simplified, and we, our identity was just determined faster. Um, we've played enough different styles of teams. We have enough. Um, film and data on our existing team to know which players are producing, what schemes are producing against what formations, what sets, and matching it versus Duke. We were just ahead in identifying what they did, what we did, and what was going to match. And so it just seems like we were clearer earlier this week as to what was going to be our best chance to, um, to have success. And again, speaking of, of the defensive staff, I know I've talked about this before. I'm just as happy. Um, for, th well, four former graduate assistants and three former players of mine <laughs> to be p coaching that kind of defense as I am for our players. I still view them as my players. Um, and so, yeah, I, I have those two things in almost separate buckets on the same team. And I'm, it's so much fun to watch those guys just have success. 
I'm curious, you mentioned the blue zone offense and replacing Bryce Hall. Those are, for each side of the ball, two huge projects this week. Was there a moment this week where you felt like, hey, those things are going well, or were you coming into today kind of curious how both of those were going to actually play out? Oh, clearly the second. I, I don't – maybe twice in my career I've, I've told my wife I think we're going to win this week or where I, I like how it looks. Most of the time I don't know, and I didn't know today. I thought we'd have a great chance to win. I thought it would be a hard-fought game. I thought it would come down to the last possession, and holy cow. So the answer is no, I didn't see it coming. Yes, I did see improvement, but I didn't know it would manifest like it did. Anything that you particularly liked or didn't like on either of those as the week went on? You know, I, I just, uh, the urgency is what I liked. We, we felt like we had, uh, let a game slip away from us a week ago, and man, that hurts. Um, and we have a lot of goals that we're after, not only this season, but for the future of the program. And um, our team expects to win, and it, it, they're not surprised when they do, and they're actually mad when they don't now. And that's a completely different place than where this program was. And I'm not saying we've arrived, but the mindset has shifted to where they expect to win and they want to win, and, and they know when they make mistakes not to win, it bothers them. And so the <coughs> urgency of their preparation was clear, and practice was difficult this week. We certainly did not ease up. If anything, we went. Uh, harder even at the expense of possible injury. Could you talk about Devontae Cross, one of the guys who's who stepped up today? Yeah, I'll, I'll mention Devontae Cross and Chris Moore as one guy um, because they're replacing Bryce Hall. And so that takes two to replace one is how that's worked um, for us because Devontae moved positions, which then means Chris gets an opportunity and they both played really well. Um, so I can't talk about one without talking about the other. And it takes, to replace Bryce, it takes two, not one. And fortunately for us, uh, Devontae will be more visible because he's on the outside. Uh, but Chris is actually more productive because he's on the inside in terms of opportunity. And they both did really well um, against a team that was scoring 40 points a game. I mean, it, so this wasn't against a team that wasn't brilliant and capable on the offensive side. They've shown that they are. That context, I hope, doesn't get lost because um, that just makes it more, I think, impactful of how uh, our defense played with Chris Moore and Devontae Cross having to do really well. Otherwise, we don't have a chance to play like that. By the way, they're both coached by Coach Howell in the secondary. Bronco, I don't know if you and the staff were aware of it, but there was a lot of talk about and criticism of the offensive line and its problems. Did that group have something to prove and did the coaches challenge them in that regard? Or? We, we certainly challenged them and yeah, they had something to prove, but I play, I pay zero attention um, to any outside interference. I know exactly who our players are. I know exactly what they have to do to improve. I know exactly what my coaches are capable of. That's why I brought 14 of them with me. Uh, we're making progress and improving the program, not accidentally, but intentionally. And there will always be criticism through a transparent business that is so volatile that, um, and holy cow, is it easy to find things that can be better. Uh, we made progress again from the inside out, and any outside interference will be there either positively, where we'll be praised maybe beyond what we should receive, or negatively beyond what we deserve. That's just how the business works. My job is to be so consistent that our players know I love, care about them, and want to help them, regardless of outside of opinion. Brett? Coach, what is it about, I mean, I, I'm still at a loss as to why teams continue to kick to Joe Reed, but what is it about him as a returner that makes him special, different? Yeah, I, um, I'm not sure I can answer that. He, he just, uh, he has amazing vision. He, he's a, a, an excellent athlete. And feel usually comes through repetition and understanding and ability. And we train that particular group really hard. And, and um, for whatever reasons, those things have all contributed to if you choose to kick to them, then there is risk. And tonight on two kicks, not only the, the touchdown, but the one earlier, man, did that set the tone. And our team actually expects it. They're surprised when he gets tackled anywhere close to the 50. You know, they actually expect it. It's, it's an amazing thing. They actually are surprised if he doesn't cross the 50, which 
that's a, a pretty powerful compliment from his peers. You mentioned in the time you've been here, Duke's been very sound with the football, yet in your games with them, it's 15 crazy. turnovers. It's crazy. Is there a, a commonality, a thread, yeah. something you're seeing? Is it an emphasis in the week? I, I don't. I, there isn't. And, and we, we knew coming in as we, when we were competing against, against Daniel Jones, Jones, their first round pick, um, it just seems, for whatever reason, turnovers happen in our favor in this game. And field position seems to happen in our favor in this game. And stuff that Duke normally doesn't do, they do against us. And I, I can't say that we're not influencing that or affecting that, um, but it certainly is uncharacteristic of their program. And, um, and so I don't have any other answers uh, for you other than it just seems to happen. We have a last question from Jeff, and then we have Joe Reed, Wayne Calipata in the back row. Bryce uh, ran the ball 22 times today. Does Brennan's improved health allow you to use Bryce differently than exactly. maybe you did? Exactly. There, we, we've been uh, very intentional not to run our quarterback, which puts more pressure on our offensive front because our backup quarterback has been hurt. And so, yes, is the answer to the question if it was whatever the question was, um, yes. Thank you.